We are going to be making a recycled pencil case or makeup bag today, whichever you decide to call it. So you should have a set of instructions near you, in front of you. These are the ones we'll be guiding us, but this video will be much more detailed for you. So um, the whole idea is to recycle plastic bags, which we seem to collect. So I have a real large variety of plastic bags here. Now, I don't do this much shopping, but um, I've just asked some friends to collect some plastic bags for me because I wanted a, a large variety. Um, and they have, they've got so many. Okay, and you're the designer here. You get to choose which bags you want to use. Um, and then the design of your pencil case or makeup bag. That you want to make. So I'm going to stick with the word makeup bag because um, actually no, pencil case. So I do need it. I didn't buy new pencil case this year. Yeah. So I'm going to make mine a pencil case. So first of all, um, collect the plastic bags you have or that you've sort of seen and you know will look good for a pencil case. Collect them. Um, you might even be able to share a few around with friends. Remember the idea is to recycle. Don't go out and buy something just to get a certain bag. Um, and the plastic bags, we do need to fuse them together. This will become our fabric. So choose two bags that you would like your fabric to be. So I'm going to choose this one. Yeah. And this one's a fairly similar size, and I do like the stripes on it. So I'm going to end up fusing these together. So we do have to prepare them before we fuse, but for now, I'm just trying to get the design of my pencil case right. So they're going to be my layers that make my fabric, but then I can put some applique on top. And what that means is maybe um, I could cut out some love hearts with the pink, okay, to then stick on top. Maybe I could cut out the letters of my name using the grey, or maybe I just like the word freedom and I want to cut that out. Maybe I actually like the stripes and would rather use another bag for my layer, so I cut out the stripes to put on top as my applique. This will all make sense in a second once you see me doing it. So give your makeup bag or your pencil case some thought. And on the inside of your instruction booklet, there's a bit of a planning page. So actually note down which plastic bags you want to use as your layers of fabric and what you want to do as your applique. Now on my design there, you can see it says Lisa with a love heart. I've changed it slightly already. I like the word love at the moment. Okay, so I've actually printed out the word love, which I'm going to cut out the letters and use them as a stencil to then cut out on my bag to then fuse on. So I need to get all of this ready from now. So once I go over to the ironing board, I can do all the ironing at the same time.
Okay. The only other uh, layer you can add, so you can add then again another layer on top, is a shiny clear layer if you like. So um, even like the plastic um, of any clear bag or um, the plastic that comes around the newspaper or the messenger or something like that, you could use that. Um, and that goes on right at the end after you put your applique on, okay, right at the end and it just creates like sort of a shiny thin layer finish. I've got this bag here, this Ali Fashions bag, which I'm just going to see how we go. I quite like this sort of grid marks on it. I'm going to glue this on top after. Okay, I might ruin the whole thing and look really ugly, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to give that a go. Okay, so I'm just going to add that to my planning page so I remember to do it. Now, to prepare your bags before we start sewing them, you do need to cut off the tops. So you don't want that hole where the handle is, I'm gonna cut that off. Or if you had a bag that had, more like a shopping bag that has the two high end handles, we need to cut them off as well. So your bag is like a nice square. So I'm just gonna cut this one. Going to cut the bottom open. Just like that. So I've got like a true happening. Straight into this one. And I've got a tube, a tube. Okay, so this equals to four layers of fabric, or four layers of plastic, because we've got two layers here, two layers, and two layers here, okay? Four layers. That would be quite sturdy. If you were going to make something like a recycled backpack or much more heavy duty, you would add another two layers or even up to eight layers. It just gets really hard to fold then. Okay. I'm gonna move over to the ironing board now. When you go over to the ironing board, you're definitely gonna need some baking paper and an iron. We'll see you there. Hi, I'm at my ironing board with my iron. You just wanna make sure that there is water in your iron. And you also want to make sure the setting is on all right. Now, we don't want to burn or sizzle the fabric. We don't want it to be on too high. So this is on linen at the moment. We've got cotton, wool, silk, synthetic. I might go down to synthetic starting on a lower temperature first, and we can always move it up. Um, okay. So I've got my ironing um, board here, obviously, like I've already said. Now, if you... I did have a look around this morning. I really wanted a piece of cardboard or something hard. Couldn't find one. So I, I'm just going to go without it. Um, but really must make sure we put the parchment or baking paper down to cover the board. The iron is going to stick any of the plastic to the board or to the iron um, that's not covered. So we need to make sure we don't want to ruin the iron or the board. Okay, so... Baking paper goes down. I'm going to do, remember, this is two layers, so I'm going to do two layers at a time. Now we are burning or melting a bit of plastic, it might smell, so have the windows open. Fresh air is good. Okay, making sure that's all covered. Link am I? Move it down, make sure it's all still covered. Now, to iron, you're not going to hold. No. We're going to move it around constantly. Okay.
sure it's all fused together. Still a bit warm, it's quite cool down. Looks good so far. Yay! Okay, so I can tell that's all fused together. It's not coming apart. I'm not going to pull it heaps, but that looks good. That's a good thickness. So, what happens now is I've got my fabric and I want to put my love applique on top. I want them to sort of go here. That's an E O B. Love. I think like that. Now, really important, I don't iron like this because I'll iron all those layers together. No good. I've got to unfold this again. Okay, because I want them to go there. So, putting my raising paper get back on top. I'm going to fuse those love letters on now. It got a bit wrinkly, <laughs> looking cool. Look at that, that looks pretty funky. Remember, keep moving the iron. Oh, careful, nearly. Baking paper's quite not up there. A little bit more. That's looking cool. All right. Make sure it's dry. I don't want it to be too hot. Let it dry a bit. Gets firmer once it's dry. There we go. I've got love on there. Now you may remember me saying that I also wanted to put the cross hatch on top. So I'm going to be back in a second. I'm just going to get that bag. Okay, so here's my alley bag. Now I don't want the words alley. I just want the checkered bit, so I'm just going to cut this. Now, I probably should have prepared this earlier with the rest of my stuff, but I didn't. Like that, I really want one. I might keep those two layers, I sort of want it. I think that looks a bit cool, maybe even a bit like that. Mm, I think just straight. Love, maybe love is free. Hmm. I think I'm just going to go like that. I like that. Okay. This back on top. And let's fuse. Letting it dry. There we go. We have something like that. And you probably also noticed I didn't want the stitching to allow for a seam allowance is going to come in a little bit. So if you do want to put words or letters on or pictures, you don't want them to come over to the side too much, okay? Because that's already going to come in a bit. Awesome. Now that our fabric's ready, we can put our zip on. Yay! 